Now, what are the five elements? Now, these five elements are stock standard. These are the things that you learn at university. Uh, you would learn about these things uh, during your training. You would learn about these things uh, during your undergraduate years. They are very simple. Okay, I haven't recreated the wheel or I haven't done anything different to what you may have learned at university. The five basic elements, and they're so easy. The subjective. The subjective assessment. Objective assessment. The analysis that you do after you've done the first two, the treatment that you provide, and the education of your patient or your athlete. As I said, it's very simple. I haven't recreated the wheel or done anything differently. But what I can share with you is that under each of these things, and we're going to go into it in a bit more depth, the things that I've figured out over the last 15 years that have gotten me great results. So, um, to start off, I'm going to start off with each one. Uh, we're going to start off with the subjective and I'll walk you through it. So, the five basic elements, starting with the subjective. First thing in the subjective assessment, you have to determine um, what the person can't achieve. Now, in your normal training, uh, under the subjective, you will have different or various levels of questions. Um, I'm not changing any of that. What I am doing is adding on a few things that I find quite important. So, you don't have to recreate this as your own list. What I'd like you to do is add this to your current list of things that you do in the subjective and see how it goes. You, all you have to do is implement these things that I'm saying into your, um, into your work and into your uh, system or into your clinical reasoning and see the results. Because as I said, these are the things that have helped me um, and these are the things that have helped me get really good results on a very regular basis uh, to the point I'm getting really good results after every single session. So, in the subjective, you want to determine what they can't achieve. What does that mean? Uh, what they can't achieve is very important to know because ultimately a person comes to you and says, well, I can't do this. Or, one of the first things they say is, I've got pain. And in about 90% of cases, or 90% of physios, what they say is, okay, where is your pain? What is your pain stopping you from doing? Now, that question is far more important. The second part to that, where someone says, well, I've got pain, okay? The second component, a person will say, well, what is the pain stopping me from doing? That is very important. The first part is, in my experience, not as important. And I'll explain why as we go through this. So, subjective, what they can't achieve. Now, when we say what they can't achieve, it has to be uh, functional tasks. And more often than not, it'll be functional tasks. So, they can't achieve being in a chair for any longer than 45 minutes. They can't run 100 meters in the standard uh, 11 seconds that they do it but now it's taking 13 and a half seconds. So it's very important to understand what they can't achieve. Also determining what their difficulties are. Some people might say, well, Kasal, I can, I can still run the race at 11 and a half seconds, but it is a little bit more difficult than, uh, than before. It is a little bit more, it, it's not as easy to achieve the same results. So you're just listening to the words that they're talking. Uh, the, 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 the listening to the words that they're saying, you're talking what they're talking about. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit muddled up here, but just bear with me, we're going to, uh, we're going to get through this. So determining what their difficulties are. Now, if I just go back, what they can't achieve, things that they normally can do and they can't achieve, two, things that they're finding difficulty with. 